Okay, so the, you say that gender is quite a central area of the diversity debate currently, but we all know that there's so many more aspects um, to the diversity question. So can you offer some comments as to why you think that gender, we focus so much on gender? Okay. It's absolutely fair to say that we probably overfocus on gender. There's so much to the diversity agenda and so many different other pieces to it. I think the reason we focus on gender is there's such a huge population. It's 50% of the population, or even if we say in the global corporation, it's 30% of the graduating classes, or 50% of the graduating classes, and we can't get it right for that large of a population, then we have a harder time imagining what to do to get it right for smaller percentages of the population. So I think that's the reason gender becomes such a focus. It's also a unifying theme around the globe. So when you're working in a large global corporation, gender is the one that you can do everywhere, at least some of those companies say. Um, I do think, though, to make progress on the others, we have to get really, really clear about what works, what's the principles for the gender issue, and then apply those principles, but adjust the nuances because I think the nuances, the key issues will be um, different. For example, one of the things that I made a big deal about today is this notion of what is a sense of belonging. And if I don't have a sense of I feel like I belong in this team, I'm valued and respected in this team, then you're not going to get the best out of me as a worker. Well, what women need to feel that they have belong on the team is probably quite different than somebody who's from a different ethnicity needs, and yet somebody who's from a layer, gay or lesbian or transsexual um, orientation needs. So we have to get those nuances right, but we have to also get the principles. I think we can do it better with gender because the population is so large. And what are some of the key areas of progress that you think we will see happening in the next 10, 15 years? Um, I hope we see progress in the next 10 to 15 years, I really do. I think the lens is on gender now in ways that it hasn't been for a while. I think it stayed, we stayed focused on diversity throughout the downturn, which is a really, really good sign. And I think we have to make progress in the next three to five years or it will be off the radar screen again. And if we get some pieces of gender right, then we'll go from there, I think, to build out the rest of the diversity slate agenda, and that'll be important for everybody. Um, but I think what we're going to see is um, increasing, I think we will see progress in the recruitment strategies. I think we'll see broader, diverse slates. I think that's well underway already, and I think we will see that. I think we'll see more women on management teams in the next three to five years. My biggest concern is we actually get them on those teams and keep them sustained on those teams so that their careers continue to progress. It's not just on and then off again. Um, I think we'll see more CEOs putting more emphasis on metrics and on the progress. We're seeing a couple of those already. I think we'll see more of that as well. Um, so I think those are the big issues. Okay. And of all the organizations you've worked with, what are perhaps some of the biggest lessons they have had to learn um, regarding diversity of gender issues? Okay. Diversity in general, I think everybody would say this is a long journey. It is not a two to three year fix. Um, so most everybody that I know has been at this for decades. So that's, it is a journey. I think we have to start there. Um, second lesson learned, I don't think it's easy to make a lot of progress without some senior level visibility and support, and we heard that today in the cases, and I think you'll see that over and over again. What that support looks like can vary, I don't think it always has to be the CEO, but I do think you've got to have somebody with influence and authority who can say this is the right thing to do, and here's where we're going to go, and I'll put the budget behind it, and I'll give my time and attention to it. Um, I think that's been an important lesson. I do think that there's um, still a lot to be done. People have learned a lot about when we put a person into a role, helping them develop and grow and be really successful in that role, and what does that package look like that helps them. Um, I think we heard today and people are beginning to understand the need to turn the lens <coughs> on the talent processes so that you don't, you get the bias out of that that you're starting to identify different sets of population, you're starting to have different kind of conversations about them, you're starting to challenge the kind of jobs and opportunities that are out there. Um, and I think the last lesson we know and have known for an incredibly long time is that we've got to focus on the management and the management practices. And we've been trying that for ages for a host of reasons, but it now becomes a critical component for the diversity agenda. 
as one of my CEOs says, it's the belly of the organization and we really have to be able to touch the belly in order to make this move forward. And I think that's where the people are turning next as the next biggest um, effort. And now you talk about the diversity agenda, but that's mainly um, with respect to the Western world, so the States and the UK and most of Western Europe. Um, but what about, could you offer some insights for managers setting out um, diversity programs in, say, organizations that are based in the Middle East or Africa or the Far East? I mean, presumably these, the factors they would have to consider would be different to what we would. Yeah, I think, first off, I think there's increasing focus on the Far East, um, Asia, recognizing that Asia is not a unolithic culture, that there are many subcultures and each one of those has its own peculiarities as you look at the diversity agenda. Um, but from the companies that I talk to, that's the next big growth area, that's the next big consumer market area, that's the next, that's where they're looking for talent at the moment. So this has become a very, very hot topic, sort of the Asia. Um, I think the issues are the same, all right? So I said at the end of today that I think we need to stop talking about the barriers and start talking about the sources of competitive advantage. I think those are the same fundamental issues, whether you're in Asia or the Middle East or South Africa or Latin America or wherever. Those, you know, what really helps people succeed and get ahead. Now, underneath that, what I need to do within Japan or what I need to do within um, Singapore or India or South Africa is going to have shades of gray. And so we have to take the principles again and look at the shades of gray of the cultures. I often talk about it in terms of volume, right? One simple analogy is if you're going to do anything in the U.S., you have to crank the volume way up. You've got to get fairly loud in order to get anybody's attention. If you're going to come to the U.K., you've got to turn the volume down. If you're going to Asia, you've got to turn it way, 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 way down. So I recognize that's a simplistic model, but in some ways it's the fundamental issues are the same. It's the nuances, the details, the volume that we've got to adjust for local culture. But presumably it, would, it will take a while, especially if we haven't even perfected it in the Western world. Well, it may possibly, stealing a page from C.K. Pralahad, it's entirely possible that we'll learn more about the diversity agenda applied to the Western world by getting it right in Asia. There are way too many times when we leapfrog, for example, on technology, by going to a different part of the world and then backfill. I suspect that we'll, find, we'll learn something out of doing this agenda in Asia that will teach us how to be better in the Western world. Okay. Well, thank you for your time.